nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy Big John and G. The two gun fix it presents Legendary Gaming. What's up, everyone? We are here for another, we did one last week, but we are here for another look at viewer comments. There were so many that I wanted to get to, and oh, last last week we were already at the, like the third, I thought it was a 20 minute mark, we were already at the 30. How long am I going to yeah. expect you to sit yeah. there to, yeah. uh, to watch something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's a little long, you know? Uh, I cut it down shorter. So that's why I'm breaking this up. So uh, let's just jump right into it, not waste any time here about talking about all those things I'm supposed to talk about, likes and subscribes and blah, 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 blah. Let's just do this. All right, I'll see you down the table. All right, so thank you for joining me for this uh, part two. I think this is going to have to become a fairly regular thing as we've been getting so many comments, but please, I'm not fetching about anything. Keep them coming. I, I love reading them. Everyone is everyone's so cool. Just so cool. So keep it up, and and, uh, and I'll keep featuring the ones that I like. Right? That's what we'll do. <laughs> so now this, uh, this goes back to a uh, Pixie playthrough of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the definitive edition uh the newest edition uh, at the time of the recording of this anyway fresh off a kickstarter uh that is uh taking apparently the old fans of the game by storm and we have a comment by lp and we've seen lp around here before so welcome back lp says my villain counter jams too the left spinner hole wasn't punched in the exact center so I opened up my box and I took a look and, you know, it's a hair. I mean, I wouldn't have noticed it actually just the casual eyeballing of it. But you're right. The the hole is punched off just enough that I think that, that that's what's causing the problems. That's what's causing this whole jam up. Uh, but I'm not the only one to have reported this. I've seen this reported before uh, on the uh, Kickstarter page. There's other people talking about it. So it seems to be across the board, more or less, uh, for what I can tell so far. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up, because I didn't even think to look uh, back there. And it was actually the most logical first choice someone should have made. And you made it. Thanks a lot, LP. <laughs> Ah, let's see. Moving forward, uh, we also have for the same for the same uh, video, the playthrough of Sentinels of the Multiverse Definitive Edition. We have our old friend Clean Sweep Thirty Eight, uh, who said the big box is nice to have too. And uh, I believe this comment was talking about uh, when I was uh, I was mentioning the, uh, the the big box for the entirety of the previous edition the enhanced edition uh i'm still struggling with definitive edition to see enough of the differences between the two to tell you the truth i need a few more games in me with this though i understand that actually maybe even a comparison game of enhanced uh, and then the next game i play being definitive and really nitpicking this a little bit you think that's you think that's something you might be interested in because i'm like on the fence like maybe i will find that fun maybe not i'm not sure but uh, no, I'm I'm so happy with the box. Oh, I am. I'm loving that. That that's that's. I mean, that that's the entire reason, obviously, why I backed at that level was to get that box. Uh, and I'm, I really love it when companies do that. Uh, about a year ago or so, I did a midday monologue Monday episode all about big box collections and how we need to see more of them uh, with companies that are coming out with so many expansions. Uh, I really think it's something that they should do. But uh, at Clean Sweep 38, you're around the comments section a lot. I know you're a big fan of, of Sentinels of the Multiverse. Uh, thank you for all the comments where you pointed out the mistakes that I made. And I mean that honestly because you do it in a in a very nice, respectful manner. And I can tell that you, you still enjoy watching the videos even though I'm making these mistakes. So Clean Sweep, I love seeing you in the comments section. Please come around more often. <laughs> and now, for uh, speaking of Midday Monologue, uh, we have one that I did on Gen X 2 Electric Boogaloo. 
Could I have named the second part anything else? <laughs> so yes, I had done a, an earlier video on uh, board games that uh, center around or pay an homage to something from uh, from, from my Gen X generation. Uh, <laughs> And there was so much that I didn't get to cover. I did a second video on it. And this is from our old friend, the Shogun Steen. Always, always hanging around the comments section. Always hanging around the live events that we do. Shogun Steen, thank you so much, brother. And you said, many quarters were wasted at the NASA Mall Arcade. Or Tri-County Flea Market Arcade. Well, I wasn't hitting those arcades. But as I said in the video, I uh, was at a much way too young age in hindsight. <laughs> Taking my buddies down to play uh, Playland, Forty uh, Second Street. Uh, woo, uh, late seventies, early early eighties was not the time I should have been going down there with my friends as kids. But no, nothing happened. We had a great time. We got lucky, or whatever the hell it was. We were smart. But yeah, so many damn quarters in these arcades, one after the other after the other. I mean, part of me, part of me thinks that the the, the American government. Was uh, had a shortage that they didn't tell anyone about, and quickly had to had to print up all these new quarters. Uh, but obviously, that's, that's not what happened. But I, I I feel because so many kids were doing just that, Shogunstein. We were just every damn quarter we could find, we could get from our parents, we could we could make change up from a buck. Yeah, that was lining our pockets. <sighs> that was fun. And we were we were healthy in a sense because we were standing up to play the video games. We weren't sitting down on a couch. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shogunstein. Love seeing you around here. Ooh, oh, this is a... I have to put on my glasses. There's a lot of writing here. And this is this is from our bud, Anthony, 20-sided warrior. Uh, thanks to the pandemic, we haven't seen him uh, much lately, but we've seen him in the comments, and he's been around the live shows. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony. Miss you, brother. You know that. So again, for the same video, for the same video on Gen X Gaming 2 Electric... Boogaloo. <laughs> Anthony said, I'm going to hit you with an idea for a board game based on a cartoon we both grew up on. The Laugh Olympics. <laughs> yes, the zany antics of Hanna-Barbera cartoon crews. You'd have three teams, just like they had in the show, and they'd compete to see who can get to the finish line first. Sounds simple, but of course the game board would have a few bonuses that move you ahead as well as pitfalls that would set your team back. Each team would also be outfitted with a deck of cards that could either set back, delay, or what I like to call a backfire on the team playing the card. So you'd have a chance of actually assisting the opposing team by mistake. An example of a card would be the reroute, and this would be something akin to Muttley placing a this way to the finish line sign, which would then send the opposing team on a longer path to the finish line. Heck, you could even call the deck Dastardly Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. <laughs> and yes, he ended the laugh there as well. <laughs> Keep up the great work, John. Anthony, that is a, that is a great idea, and uh, I, uh, I'll tell you something. Now, it gets a little difficult. Now, I remember when I was a kid, and uh, and I, one of the first times I saw William Shatner uh, doing, like, a convention and speaking, and people, you know, asking him very specific questions about episodes, a point was brought up that he filmed so many episodes back to back to back. Uh, he had to learn so many scripts, memorize them in his head, and then dump them in order to learn the new one um, that he, he didn't have a great memory of, you know, specifics of episodes because of this. And that makes sense. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I have over 1,500, close to 2,000 videos up right now. And I can't remember each and every one of them. But Anthony, I swear to you, probably about two years ago in a midday monologue, I, uh, I brought this up. I did. I agree with you. I have also thought of this, uh, especially uh, this came up after uh, I had discovered that there was a Wacky Races board game, uh, which is really cool set up. Uh, Muttley and Dastardly are NPCs in that game. And I almost feel that maybe, maybe the really rotten's 
in Laugh Olympics game that you're proposing should also be sort of like an NPC style team. Should be the game's AI that you're trying to beat. Uh, which at first you would think maybe that would make it a two player game since that only leaves the Yogi Yahooies and the Scooby Doobies. But if, uh, if, 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 if players could play different individuals on the teams, and then you add in, uh, now this, this is where it stretches a little bit because I don't really call anything like this in the cartoon show, but if each individual can have their own, their own bonus, their own thing that, that they need to do so that they can, they can get a personal win. This way you could have multiple players on the same team that obviously they want their team to win. They want the Yogis to win. They don't want you and your Scoobies to win. But even though they have multiple players, each player can have their own little agenda and come off with a personal win on that. And this way you can have multiple players in a game that only has two, or in your in your, in your side of it, the way you see it, just the three the three teams that you can actively play from. But yeah, that would be great. I would I would re, I would I would put money down. <laughs> for a Laugh Olympics game. Um, now the biggest problem with that, I actually, I think would be the same problem they had with the original cartoon is that they don't have the rights to, uh, to Dick Dastardly. And, uh, and so they had to use, uh, they had to use the, the, what did they call him in Laugh Olympics? They didn't call him Dick Dastardly. It was like the Baron or something like that, I think. So there were slight differences. But hey, it would be fun. I'm with you. I'm with you on this thought, Anthony. Let's let's find someone that thinks we're crazy enough that we have a good idea. <laughs> and now let's move on to the next set. I have one more set here. <laughs> so, for, oh, okay. So it, is, uh, it was something big. Uh, Kickstart or drop kick that I recently did. The most recent before the dropping of this video, obviously was for uh, Cool Mini or Not, Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide game. Now, the, the Kickstarter is already over, so uh, spoiler, I personally found it to be a kickstart, not a drop kick. Uh, and also, we got a chance to do the biggest thing we've ever done here. Uh, thanks to saving up money beforehand and then some holiday cash and just moving a couple of things around. We, we did the, the big, huge, all-in hunger pledge. So we get all the boxes. We, we were getting Galactus. Uh, we're getting the extra box of tiles, the extra box of dice. Literally everything. Everything that was available for this, we went in completely. Complete. Compl I was going to say add something else to that, but there's nothing else to add. We literally went in complete. Uh, now, Scotland, Scotland Thomas, Scotland Thomas said, This was a great video. I really like your energy. I got the 241. I feel like this is almost a cultural event for gaming. I might end up going to 410. Now, when I dropped this video, the larger collection sets weren't released yet uh, because they were every every other day. Every other day, they were releasing a new add-on box. So it started with the core box where you play the zombies, having to feed off of bystanders and being fought by AI superheroes that haven't been turned to zombies yet. And then there was the X-Men core box where it's the exact opposite flip where you're playing the heroes fighting these zombified heroes and villains and then there was galactus and they, that that was the 410 dollar and that's what i was originally in for that's all i thought i was doing scotland if you're watching this video man did you foresee all of this happening because i didn't but like I said, luckily I had some stuff saved up. I had some stuff I didn't know what I was going to do with. Thought I was doing something else with it. Uh, and just finagled a couple of bucks here and there. And I did it. I did it, Scotland. You're going to see the whole thing here. Now, the way I read that they were doing this, Cool Mini or Not is doing this uh, uh, drop uh, for shipping, is that they're going to do uh, you, you have the option, I believe, of two waves. And uh, I'm probably going to do the first. I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Uh, the first wave is that hopefully their thought on the subject is that by s September or October, we'll have the one core box of Marvel Zombies. And the second wave of shipping by June or July of 23, they'll be shipping out 
the other 10 boxes or maximum up to other 10 boxes, depending on how much extra stuff you got. So we'll see how that all works out. But you're, you know, one thing I wrote back to you, Scotland, is uh, the fact that you wrote that this feels almost like a cultural event. I love your choice of words there. Um, it definitely is for Cool Mini or not in the sense that this was the biggest over nine million dollars collected. This was the biggest, uh, biggest item they had on Kickstarter. It blew everything else that they've done out of the water. It blew uh, exploding kittens out of the water. They did something like eight four eight five or something like that. So it didn't touch on like Frost Haven or Gloomhaven. Uh, those things did what? What was I told? Somebody wrote that in, my, in one of the comments, uh, informed me about it. I forgot what it was. It was like 10 million and 12 million or something. So it came really close to that 10 million mark. Wow. And it definitely is close to uh, the other one, 12. Uh, it's not that far apart. So it did a lot better than I think a lot of people expected. Even me, even me. I thought maybe it was going to hit eight at the very most. And it went above that. Hmm cool but i'm with you and just like you I, I can feel your energy about this and i share it brother yeah <laughs> Woo. thanks for the comment scotland and uh is this a new is this a uh, no i've seen this name before just not maybe as much right okay let's check this out so big johnny g is how to play uh this is the edition for a hero quest 2021 <laughs> Jay Villanova, I think I said that right, I hope so, said, I've been watching this video for at least two or three times. My version of Hero Quest is coming in today, and I can't wait to play with the kids. I already had downloaded the app as well. You know, I get really nervous uh, out of all the videos I do because... Uh, and if you, if you don't know, this is one of the first videos you're watching. Everything I do in this channel, I'm doing uh, for fun. I'm absolutely doing it fun. Uh, and the, the how-to plays I kind of trickled off on a little bit. It's not that I wasn't having fun doing them, but I, I, I felt like so many other channels are doing better versions in general of how-to play videos than me. Uh, and the amount of time, it, it, these are probably the longest, these are the second longest videos it takes me to, to film. I just kind of, you know, stopped doing it a little bit for a while but now i've been picking it up again i'm trying to improve my technique on how i'm filming these uh and i'm really glad that you enjoyed what i did with that video that means a lot to me uh because it tells me that i am improving i am showing some sort of hope in delivering better how-to play videos for everyone so yes i uh and if, if you missed it i did i did one playthrough already a live playthrough already i wanted to do a second one this past week i didn't get a chance Fingers, toes, and tails crossed, my friends. I'll be able to get a chance to to do uh, to do uh, the Ragnar, saving Sir Ragnar, the second adventure. I'll be able to do that live uh, this week, hopefully. Uh, yeah, it's great. I'm so glad that you're excited, Jay. Woo! <laughs> and uh, moving on, we have oh, this I believe this is the first time. I don't recognize offhand. I don't recognize this uh, this commenter. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Uh, but for gaming radar. Sentinels of Earth Prime by Greater Than Games. We have Discoverer Games. Left a message. Is this compatible with Sentinels of the Multiverse Definitive Edition? Okay, that was before I listened to everything. So, not the new version. Still, we'll be picking this one up. Well, actually, they are coming out already had. I think it's online, actually. Uh, if you go to the Kickstarter page or if you go to maybe their homepage, I haven't even looked at this on their homepage. I've only ever looked at the Earth Prime stuff on the Kickstarter page. Uh, but there is a conversion. There's a conversion uh, paper printout uh, that they have. There may be a physical copy coming with the game, I think. But now, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I, I, I really have not seen thick amount of changes between the definitive edition and the enhanced edition it's kind of like the feeling i have when second edition dungeons and dragons first came out i was pissed that i spent all this money on first edition and now they're coming out with second edition so i got second edition because they weren't coming out with anything else in first and i realized how easy it was to convert one to the other and I could still run first edition games using a lot of the second edition stuff with very, very little changing or tweaking or, or, or use of home rules. Uh, and I feel that way 
on the surface between Definitive Edition and Enhanced Edition. I just want to do a little more research before I do a video specifically making that statement. But I am planning on doing a comparison video as I recently did a comparison video for old school original 1989 Hero Quest and the 2021 edition Hero Quest. So keep your eye out for that. But yeah, there's going to be a, a conversion sheet. So we'll be able to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Discover Games. Thank you so much for that comment. Oh, boom. Clean sweep. <laughs> the slideshow gaming coming soon in 22, where basically I showed off uh, all the games I've gotten for the holidays between December and January, and was getting ready to start doing unboxings for, slideshows for, playthroughs of, maybe a how-to play, all the games I'm getting ready, gearing up for this year. Uh, Clean Sweep 38, again, you got two comments here. Thank you for always being around. I really appreciate your your, your attention to what I'm doing. So uh, the two uh, comments, he said, keep an eye out for Long Shot the Dice Game and Wild Serengeti. Both are coming out soon this year. All right, so I do have to look up Long Shot the Dice Game. Uh, Wild Serengeti, I've seen it, does look good, actually. Uh, I'm on the fence whether I'm going to get it or not, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to do like a gaming radar or something on it. But uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there's so many other things I want to get. Uh, and I, you know, to be honest, that is the one drawback for running a channel that's, that you're not planning on monetizing or getting sponsors for, so you can keep 100% creator controlled and have your own amount of fun whenever and however you want, is that, uh, I, I, I back everything on this channel so I can only afford so much every year. And with the gigantic dip in the wallet I took for Marvel Zombies, I'm really stretched. There's a few things I know that are coming out, like I want to keep on top of uh, my Marvel Champions, the card game stuff, you know, mostly expansion kind of stuff. Uh, on top of that, I'm just really glad that I quite literally have unboxing material for, for over a year. <laughs> I'm really glad because I can't really afford much else. Uh, but so that's why I'm on the fence about whether I'm going to get Wild Seven Getty. I definitely want to check out Long Shot the Dice Game. I, I love chucking dice. <laughs> and if it wasn't for this pandemic, you know what? Let me just tell you this. If it wasn't for this pandemic, literally months before it, it originally hit us here in America, I was thinking of a new a new segment, maybe do once a month, where I'd uh, go around my neighborhood or maybe uh, at my job at lunchtime and do this thing called uh, um, uh, Dice with Strangers, where I just find someone that wants to play a, you know, a quick little dice game and, and film it, and show off how fun these games are, how fast they are, how you can get a game in minutes anywhere. I wanted to do that, but it's, it's not the best idea right now. But yeah, dice games. I love chucking dice. And the other thing Clean Sweep 38 has to say is thanks again for sharing the game time last night. I love the fact that you're watching. Uh, and I believe what you're talking about in this particular one is the is the uh, Sentinels thing you were talking about. Whatever one you were talking about, though, no need to thank me. I just love showcasing these games that I'm enjoying. It's the only reason you see a game on this channel. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a very small percent, like Fundamental Games likes to send me stuff. Um, uh, uh, Rococulus Games likes to send me stuff. Uh, Sentinel, Sentinel Cow and, uh, and, and Fallen Dominion Studios. But other than those companies, every single thing you see here on this channel is because I'm having fun and I want to show it off. <laughs> and I think we have another, oh, we have two more, two more for the same video from the same individual, two comments, and that is the Pixie playthrough of Sentinels of the Multiverse Definitive Edition I was just talking about. And uh, Mikhail, I'm gonna do a little butchering on this, I apologize. Mikhail Kapilovich. Hope that's close. <laughs> and the two comments, the first one was, could the Sidekick app be used to keep track of all the stuff? Or would it not really work for this edition of the game? Although, as I've said in, in a couple of answers already concerning this title, I do feel that the differences between these games are very, very slight. I could be wrong. I'm going to do a deeper dive on this. 
Uh, but even though I feel that they're very slight, I don't think the app could handle keeping track of everything for the new game for you. Uh, I'm not sure if that would really work out right to the point where I'm not even going to try it. Also, I believe they are coming out with an app specifically for a definitive edition. So keep your eye out for that. And Mikhail also, also on the same day, he said, uh, What are the foil cards like? I went for the sleeves so I could protect them along with the rest of the cards, but don't have my copy of it yet. Quite sure by now you do. It's <laughs> like two weeks since he left this message. As, uh, oh, sorry. Always played the digital version of the game. Never had it physical before. The digital version is amazing. I love the digital version of the game. I play it all the time. I don't think there's a there could be a more perfect app version of, of the game. I don't think there's anything that they left out at all. I think it covers everything, every nuance of, of rules. It taught me a few things I was I was making as a mistake in the card game that I thought I was doing legit. It's uh <laughs> Uh, it's great. Uh, please have fun. Continue playing that app. Uh, as long as they're supporting it, I know I'm going to be playing that app. Uh, and as far as your other question, uh, uh, yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, the new app with the old one, I really doubt it is. If I'm wrong, if you try it and it works, please leave a message here. But I'm convinced enough that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to spend time trying it. All right. And uh, that's it right now. I kept it under 30 minutes. Whew, got it close, but I did keep it under 30 minutes. Now, there is a special comment I want to I want to get to uh, right now. I'm not sure. I may have done it live before the dropping of this, or it's coming next week. And that's because it is, a, it is one of the longest, most in-depth comments that I've gotten on this channel, and I really want to take the time to address it properly. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it's aired already before this, or maybe it's going to be next Monday. We'll see. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. Thank you for leaving comments. I, I, I love the fact that everyone in, uh, in the comment section is, is cool. They're respectful. They're intelligent. They, they're understanding. That's cool. Every gamer needs to be like that. Every gaming table needs to be like that, my friends. All right. I'm your buddy, Big John, at G2 Gun Pixel Presents. <laughs> Legendary Gaming and I am out of here. <laughs>